I'm not my voice sounds good. So what we just heard right there is a CPU only generation from of text to speech. Today we're going to be looking at a new text to speech repository from ByteDance called Mega TTS3. Now, before we get into this, I do want to say that I feel like the amount of text to speech and other voice related releases that we've been getting lately has been awesome because there have been a ton of them coming in. I think that just going through like my past month or two of videos, there has been a disproportionate amount of new voice um, repositories that I've been testing, which is fantastic. So with that, let's just jump in and take a look at another one. So what we have right here is called Mega TTS, and this is by ByteDance. Now this repository is interesting, and truth be told, I kind of went back and forth about even doing this video because while this shows some great potential in certain areas there are also a bit of frustrating um, decisions here, if you will. If we look through the repository right here, we can see first and foremost that the backbone of the TTS Diffusion Transformer has only 450 million parameters. So it is very small and efficient as they claim right here. Now, here's where it gets kind of a little frustrating and not only for myself, but a sentiment I kind of saw also expressed online in other communities where ultra high quality voice cloning is listed here. However, if we actually scroll down a bit more, we see that for security issues, they do not upload the parameters necessary to actually go ahead and clone a voice. They do give you the option here for academic research where you can upload this to a voice request queue and then kind of get your clone voice, the at least kind of the recipe or ingredients you would need to then go ahead and use that clone voice made. Beyond that, we can just see that the repository is really quite simple. They do show a web UI as well. However, I personally had a bit of trouble with actually getting the web UI to work. And aside from that, you can see it's pretty simple and shouldn't take too much to run and download. So that's pretty much what we're going to go ahead and do right now. To begin with the local installation, we're just going to go ahead and clone this to our local machine by just typing git clone and then the repository name. And once we have done that, we are just going to go ahead and change our directory into the newly cloned repository. From there, we can just jump down here into the installation section and basically just go ahead and follow all of these steps right here. Now, they are using specifically Python 3.9 for this. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but if you actually go and look at some of the requirements, it does seem pretty strict that it wants Python 3.9. So for keeping with the proper schema, we will just go ahead and kind of stick with that. Once that's done, we are just simply going to go ahead and install the requirements.txt. Once our conda environment has been created and we have activated as we see right here. So if we go ahead and do that, it will take a little bit of time depending on whether any of these are cached on your system or not. And then they will go ahead and be installed. Now, once all of the requirements have been successfully installed, we need to go ahead and actually get the model weights. They do have two links here. One is on Google Drive, the other is on Hugging Face. Seeing that I prefer to use Hugging Face for any things of these sort, we will just be going ahead and downloading them from here. And for that, we will be using the Hugging Face command line. I'm not going to specifically go through how to actually install and authenticate and set that up. However, um, I will just show the actual process of downloading the weights, assuming you do have Hugging Face CLI installed and are authenticated, which you can just check by Hugging Face dash CLI and then who am I? And it will show you your Hugging Face name, assuming you are actually logged in and authenticated. So once we're authenticated, we can just do Hugging Face dash CLI and then download and then the actual kind of name and then repository name following that, which in this case would just be ByteDance slash mega TTS3. And then we will do dash dash local dash dir for local directory. And then we want to save them to a directory named, which they mentioned right here, checkpoints. And once we do that and have it typed just like that, if we press enter, it will go ahead and just download the required files and then move them into a checkpoint subdirectory of our cloned mega TTS repository, which we can see right here. And this will be populated in due time as the models finish downloading. We can see uh, it's not a huge size download, but will take a little bit of time. 
When the files have completed downloading, we should theoretically be ready to actually go ahead and just try some of these command line examples. Now, something that I've struggled with with this that really tripped me up is essentially what we're going to see right here when I just try to run one of these as is. Now, I have followed the instructions as we saw here to actually get the Conda environment set up using the correct version of Python. The model weights are downloaded and placed in the checkpoint subdirectory, etc. So when I run this, hypothetically, we should be able to actually get it to work. The problem I kept having is it says module not found, module named TTS, and this really was quite frustrating. So the way that I kind of worked around this is as we have the command right here, I've just pasted it in a text editor so it will be a little easier to actually modify the prompt for some of the generation testing we are going to do. I append Python path and then equals period to basically just tell the system to look here as well, or unscientifically, but basically this just allows it to look here as well to see that TTS is a module located in this specific kind of repository, if you will. So if we go ahead and now run this here, we will see that instead of getting that error, it does actually work as it is supposed to, and we can kind of bypass that. So we'll notice right now that card zero will begin to actually go ahead and Kind of process all this. I'm seeing right now around 6.4 gigabytes of video RAM utilization that jumped up to 7.4 right there and it has now completed. So if we jump over in here back into the repository and we go into the gen um, subfolder. This is actually the output of what we just tested and generated there uh, rather quickly I would say. So I'm going to just turn my little attached sound device on and we will play this. This is a test of the Mega TTS3 repository. I hope you enjoy this test and that my voice sounds good. So, this is a test again, of the Mega I mean, it's a TTS thing. It sounds all right. It's expressive. And you may have noticed that there sounded like there was a little music underneath the actual spoken voice. And this is one of the negatives and things that like really frustrates me about this is that <laughs> in the actual sample prompt for English here, Listen to this because the music is actually in this sample prompt as well. This is the research headquarters for one of the oldest companies in tech, IBM. So, this is the research headquarters. I mean, I don't. Perhaps there's some reasoning that eludes me for why you would actually keep that music in. Perhaps that's to actually show how well it can clone the voice. Because if you do think about it, the generation we just heard prior to hearing this demonstration one sounded exactly like the demo one that we just heard right here, which is essentially akin to being able to clone a voice with this, that is what you would expect to get as a result as well. So that goes back to here where it does say ultra high quality voice cloning. I do believe that were the actual kind of code and things of that sort available to actually try that, it would do very well based on the fact that it actually kept the music in the cloned generation result. So again, I don't know if that was done on purpose to kind of be like, hey, look, this really can clone well, which I would assume perhaps could be the case, but unfortunately we can't really test ourselves. So with that, that is kind of partially the frustrating thing about this repository. However, there is also a really big positive I noticed with this. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just delete that generated file. And what I'm going to do right now is run it again, except instead of allow this to use my GPU, which is denoted by the CUDA visible devices flag, which um, even if you just remove that, the behavior I noticed was if I omit that CUDA visible devices flag, it will still use my GPU. So in order to just force it to use CPU, we leave the actual specified GPU ID uh, empty by just putting two quotation marks right here. So this is actually going to run it only on CPU, which will be a little intensive. However, this is one of the things I noticed about this repository that I thought was really cool, is that it will do this on CPU in a reasonable amount of time considering what you're doing. And that goes back to that really small parameter um, as we see diffusion transformer right here when they say lightweight and efficient. So if I open another terminal window and type top, we're basically going to see my CPU utilization right here in the first row. And you will notice that while it is doing this right now, the GPU is not actually being utilized at all to generate the speech. So I will kind of fast forward this and we'll see how long it actually takes to using CPU only generate a 
pretty decent cloned voice result. So we can see right there, and I was kind of counting in my head, but I really do think that was under a minute to actually using CPU only and no graphics card at all generate this sample speech that we're about to hear right here. So if we go back into the gen folder and then we play it. This is a test of the Mega TTS3 repository. I hope you enjoy this test and that my voice sounds good. So what we just heard right there is a CPU only generation from of text to speech. And it is cool that this runs entirely on the CPU in a reasonable amount of time. So, okay, how long was this? Like this seven seconds. So this was about seven seconds worth of generated audio. And it probably took a little under a minute just on CPU. And that is an Intel i7 12700K processor. So a decent processor, but it is a uh, getting up there in age as well. So this is just something kind of cool and something very positive about this repository is if you don't have a CUDA capable GPU or something like that, you're not actually going to be locked out of using this. With that, again, there's not really, I mean, there are a few other things here like accents and things of that sort. There is also a web interface, but I did not actually have good luck getting this to work, which was really quite frustrating. I will try it again right now, I suppose. And remember, we need to append that Python path equals dot. Um, if you have that issue I had where basically it said module TTS is not found. So I did not really have this working well for me. Essentially, the way to actually go ahead and use this web repository is to drag the samples that we are drawing from right here. So if we go into assets, we have the English prompt WAV or WAV file, whatever you want to call that, as well as this NumPy file. So hypothetically, if I just type, hey, how are you? And I press submit, it should go ahead and generate. But whenever I did this, I just kind of got an error and nothing ended up happening. So I'm not sure if there's supposed to be uh, something that I omitted to do here, but unfortunately I didn't really have good luck with this web interface. But seeing that we can't really do much with this aside from the default voices that are given to us, I didn't really see that as too much of an impediment to kind of <laughs> showing the repository off. So really, that is going to conclude a somewhat short but simple look at a new text-to-speech repository, this case Mega TTS3 from ByteDance. As I said in the beginning, this repository definitely does have a lot of potential because the actual voice cloning seems like it will work very well. However, on the other side of the coin to that, we're not actually allowed to use it. So <laughs> again, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Aside from that, it was cool to see this work on CPU only. Admittedly, I haven't tested other repositories only on CPU, but I saw this one and figured it might actually be cool to test it, especially because they specifically mentioned that they support CPU inference in one of the comments here for one of the sample commands. So I figured, why not try it? And it really was not half bad in terms of timing and things like that for CPU only. It's nice to see things that do not require a CUDA capable GPU or even a GPU at all to actually be able to play with some of the AI stuff. With that, that's probably going to wrap this video up. If you have any questions, definitely please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.